Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hey everybody, it's Sunny and Shar, and I'm very excited today because I have people in the studio that I really, really, truly love, and one of them is Brad Bessie's in the house, hooray, and Gabriel, his son. And my guest today is Richard A.U., who I met actually through Brad Bessie, and um, Brad's our audience with Gabriel, so... Just, just it, it, we're 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 gonna have a little canned. La- it's not canned laughter. It's real laughter, <laughs> and and so Richard is a, an award-winning producer. And gosh, I saw that you worked at so many different broadcast places. Where you worked in? Um, yeah, I worked at Extra, the Ooh. TV show, for seven and a half years. I was part of the team that brought in Mario Lopez. And now he's leaving. Shows you how long you that's know been. What? I thought that was a secret that Mar- oh, I thought it oops. was a secret that Mario's leaving. <laughs> Did I blow it? He, no, but he is leaving. It's been announced. Okay. It's been announced. Oh, it's good. Been, Bradley I'm says so it's glad been Brad's here. Yeah, Did you see? Hollywood. Right. <laughs> he's moving he's, to Access, Access Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. So what are they going to do with the girls that are at Access Hollywood now? And 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 that uh, young, that young man three. is so funny. Yeah. Natalie, Natalie Morales, Morales is leaving. We're getting access. some inside and scoop. Are, is yeah. she going to do? Is she? We don't know what's happening with Natalie Morales. We don't know. But Uh-oh. who's going to access? Who's going to extra? Is the question. Brad? Who's going to extra? Wow. Do you know who's going to extra? I've, I've heard things they haven't been so I can't repeat. That. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so Brad knows secrets. So can I be psychic and? Yeah, be no, psychic. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, so no, because today is all about Richard Ayub and his amazing foundation, Project Angel Food, and but wait, but you also, you also started. You're okay. You're an Emmy-winning producer who's run newsrooms in Texas, Arizona, Florida, and Los Angeles. It's amazing. Yes, I worked in television news for many, many years, and. I actually had the privilege of working in television news in Los Angeles during the 90s, which was the most exciting time to be in local news. That's when the O.J. Simpson case happened. Oh, wow. That's when we had the earthquake. That's when we had the Menendez trials. That's when we had, you know, all of these things happening. Yeah. The fires, the riots. It was a very, very crazy time. And mm-hmm. I remember I was working at KCBS, mm-hmm. and we had the O.J. Simpson trial on television. Uh-huh. We had a gavel-to-gavel coverage of it because it was a big deal. And um, Bill Bell, the executive producer oh. of Young and the Restless and oh. Bold and Beautiful, called me up in the control room Mm -hmm. and said, take this crap off, (laughs) put my soap opera back on. Are you serious? Yeah, that's true. We played the uh, reruns of the soap at like one in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Wow. But we were preempting it all. That's uh, that's amazing. I mean, the, the, those were really historical times. Yeah. And just a real quick story. Um, I worked for KCBS television Mm -hmm. channel too. And we broke the O.J. Simpson story. Uh, David Horowitz, you might remember, wow. was a fight back reporter. I remember him. Remember, consumer reporter. Brad, you remember probably. Right. Yeah. Uh, he lived in, Bur- in Brentwood, uh-huh. and he was walking his dog in the morning, and he saw a crime tape around O.J.'s house. And he called and said, get a live crew over here immediately. Whoa. We did, and we went on live, world exclusive. Amazing. KCBS television. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it was great. Wow. And so now you're doing God's work. You're you're an angel working for an angel project 
for a uh, Project Angel Food, and it's. Oh wait, I just have before I just have to rave about what you did. Okay, so you okay? Your budget went from three point nine million to five point eight million since you've been there. In three years. In yeah. three years, that's unbelievable. And then okay, and then okay, so. Oh, you were fundraiser for APLA's AIDS Marathon and was on board of the Trevor Project for seven years, helping grow the annual budget from six hundred thousand to six million. That when I was on the board of the Trevor Project, that's the growth that, we had. Yeah, you're, so you're I've, you're amazing. I've always had this uh, passion for philanthropy. Uh, when I was 10 years old, this is the way it all started. Right. And you knew my mother, so you'll appreciate this story. Yeah, Oh. So my mother. God um, bless her. She passed away 10 years ago. Yeah. May she, she, I'm sure she's resting in peace. I'm sure she's right here. I'm sure she is, <laughs> and very proud. Um, so she was about, I was about Gabriel's age. I was right. about 10 years old. He's 11. And I told my mother I needed a new pair of sneakers. Uh-huh. My mother um, obviously didn't think I needed them. Oh. But she said, okay, let's get in the car. Mm-hmm. We got in the car. I thought, okay, we're going to go to this, you know, a shopping center. We go past the shopping center. Mm-hmm. We keep on going. And we go into Mexico because I grew up in El Paso, Texas on mm-hmm. the border. So we go into Juarez, Mexico. And I'm like, what in the world are we doing? We keep on going. We see a shopping center there. We go past it. Mm-hmm. We go into this area, which is the garbage dump. And she goes into the dump. And she shows me the people who are living at the garbage dump. Oh, my. And it was oh her way of saying... You want a new pair of shoes? These people don't even have an old pair of shoes. Oh. And so that was a beautiful lesson for me because she told me that I said, but mom, how can I help all of these people? And so wow. like years later, I'm trying to help all these people. And that's what Project Angel Food does. It helps people who are kind of forgotten and alone mm-hmm. and who are sick and hungry Mm -hmm. and we bring the meals to their home and we have never in the 30-year history a project angel food charged a dime for our services Mm -hmm. we get it from corporations from events from individuals from some government funding about 18 percent and and you you sell these like if people tell people about these beautiful we call them, them feed beads. He gave me one. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I'm glad you picked that one. Well, I like, I love it. And this is a tiger eye one. I don't know if you can get it on camera. Um, so this one, Char, I'm surprised you didn't pick it. This is the well, one no, I, I, you, I, I gave to Sharon Stone. Oh, I thought I get both of them. You get both of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, <laughs> I this need to one, make a donation. So though. these. We charge thirty-five dollars for right, which pays for a week's worth of meals. For That's someone incredible. Who is sick. And these are all made by our volunteers at Project Angel Food. It's really a fun social Thank enterprise. <coughs> wow. Yeah, you get them all, of course. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you money. No, you don't have. Yeah. To. Well, I want to. I want okay. to make a donation, Good, so yeah. I will make a donation. Okay, and I good. and how can people make a donation? They can go to angelfood.org slash donate or just angelfood.org and then there's a big donate button is it up, right there. Is it up on the screen? I'm going to do it right now. And also if you're Angel watching food. on Facebook, org. you can just donate uh, through Facebook as well. Through Facebook, you can just donate. So what because about... Because there's probably a donate button there. Okay, so now do you also help homeless people? No. Our people are on the verge of homelessness. Right. We have no financial requirement, but turns out that 98% of our clients are living at or below the poverty level. So it turns out that the people who are poor, who friends stop calling, right? who family stops visiting. And, you know, these people haven't been sick for a day right. or a week or a month. They've been sick for an extended period of time. Oh my. And so they're at home. 
they have mobility issues. If they have lung disease, they're probably attached to an oxygen machine. If they have kidney problems, they're probably on dialysis. If they have cancer, they're going through radiation mm -hmm. or chemotherapy. So these are people who are very, very sick. And they have no time or energy to shop or cook for themselves. So these angels come and bring meals to them, seven days worth of meals at a time. Wow. And they put it in their freezer and they pick, decide every day which one they want. That's a beautiful thing. It's really but We don't remarkable. know what it's like when we're healthy and we're in, and we have family and we have friends who can take care of us, even if we have a cold or the flu or something. We're all lucky that, we're, you know. We're so blessed. When we're sick, people call and say, can I bring you chicken soup? Can I right. bring you orange juice? Can I do right. whatever? So these people who we serve may have had that for a Are while. Are they mostly elderly people? About 65% are over the age of 60. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them are older, and 50% of them live alone. So when our driver comes every week, that driver might be the only visitor they have in a week. Oh. And, you know, I've delivered meals myself, and I know Brad has worked in the kitchen. But what happens is sometimes the client will get dressed up because someone's coming to visit them. Right. They get excited. Wow. Sometimes I remember I was delivering to oh. a woman in Long Beach, and you have to jump a fence, go through the backyard. Right. You know, it's, it's not easy being a driver. And she had a bottle of water waiting for me. Oh. It's, you know, everyone does what they can. And some people... Just flash a smile. Some people want to chat a little bit more. But the unifying thread mm -hmm. with every single client that I have ever met mm -hmm. is gratitude. Because they are grateful that these people who used to be strangers mm -hmm. are bringing them something that not only tastes good, it's keeping them alive, and in many cases making them feel better. Who cooks the meals? Eighty percent of our kitchen is volunteers. So we have an eight thousand square foot kitchen on Vine Street. And if anyone wants to volunteer, we look for volunteers. We're open six days a week. And we need volunteers every single day. Mm -hmm. You can go on angelfood.org slash volunteer mm -hmm. and fill out a form to volunteer. We would love to have you. And what, what do you what kind of meals do you make? We, for most clients, they get three months of unduplicated meals. So we make everything wow. from turkey roni, which is like macaroni with turkey. Right. To lasagna, to the the favorite of most clients what? is quiche and tater tots. Oh. And uh, Charlie Sheen volunteered in our kitchen. He and did. he was on tater tot duty. He was scooping up tater tots in our trays. Oh, good for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I'm I'm going to give Charlie a, a good shout out because okay. he came in. He said, "Please, no media. I just want to get a feel for what's like." And we have an orientation at eight. He came. He went. Started working at eight thirty. The shift ends at twelve thirty. And you know, people. Some people stay. Most volunteers will stay and maybe have lunch, mm -hmm. but some will leave. Charlie stayed and had lunch with the other volunteers. That's that was really, really lovely. Cool. Yeah. Oh, there he is. That's and really Charlie lovely. also appeared at our Angel Awards, and that's a picture of him and his girlfriend, who's just lovely, and me. <laughs> oh wow! And um, he that's, that's fantastic. He he's really been very supportive he's, of us. He's really turning his life around, isn't he? Don't don't they want to reboot? Two and a half men. Oh, do they? Maybe Brad knows. Brad, do you know? <laughs> Brad, we should have you on camera here. I'm hearing it first here. <laughs> Brad, it says you're to have here first. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I thought you I... You might be I, predicting I, it. Sure. No, I read somewhere. It's hard. You might be that saying that something they might be talking that you're about predicting. It. Maybe, but I, I thought I read somewhere that they're talking about it. Because I read the that... Um, the, the other guy in Two and a Half Men hasn't 
really connected with Brad for a long, I mean, with uh, Charlie. Charlie for a long time. So I don't know. John Cryer. Yeah, John Cryer. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? Yeah. He, he's, he married a girl. From TV News. From TV News. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know her. Oh, do you? Yeah. Did you work with her? or Never worked with her, but, you know, in local Is television. Is it Lisa Joyner? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was good. I don't that know where very that pulled good. that one out. <laughs> She's lovely, though. She is lovely. She's really Very, lovely. very nice. Yeah. So, um, so when you do this, you're giving people dignity and you're, ge- and you're helping them feel like they're not a burden. Yes. You know, um, this is interesting. I was talking to a client the other day. Her name is Candace, mm-hmm. and she has congestive heart failure. Mm-hmm. And she has been in the hospital so many times that she has scars here on her chest from, what's it called, a pick line? From pick line. Mm-hmm. Um, and so every time she would get sick, she'd have to go into the hospital. And she goes, it's a burden to my family. They have to take me. They have to visit me. Mm-hmm. They have to bring me home. They have to get me food. Mm -hmm. So we put her on this new program. It's a CHF program. This congestive heart failure diet is extremely strict. You Mm -hmm. can only have two grams of sodium a day in all of your meals. And it's very hard to know what has salt and what doesn't. Like a stalk of celery has 32 milligrams of salt in it. Just naturally. Seriously. Just celery. So, you know, how in the world is Candace going to know that kind of stuff? So the state of California, for the first time ever, is funding Project Angel Food. Oh. And they're giving us some funds to prove that our healthy meals can bring down health care costs and can keep people out of the hospital Well, what about diabetics? Diabetics as well. But we're focusing on CHF right now. Because they are the highest utilizers of Medicaid in California. They go to the hospital more than anyone else. And that's what Candace was like. But you, you guys have a saying that food is medicine. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Food is medicine. So if you eat the right food, mm-hmm. it can actually work as medicine in some ways. Mm-hmm. And so for Candace... She started eating our meals, and she said, all I'm going to do is eat your meals and nothing else. And, you know, the program is for three months. She used to go to the hospital almost every month or every two oh. months. Those three months, she never went to the hospital once. Whoa. We have just checked up on her. She's finished six months. Mm-hmm. She hasn't returned to the hospital once in six months. Okay, that's amazing. She's lost Aww. weight. She's more mobile. And she's healthier. Her quality of life has changed dramatically. Does Food she go is out? medicine. Does she leave her home? Does she, do, like do these people leave their home or go for walks? Or so, if they can? some some people with congestive heart failure are a little more mobile than other people. Mm-hmm. So she she has a son who helps her out, but she does move around a little bit, and her life mm-hmm. is changing. You must sleep well. <laughs> You know, um, when I worked in television, I think I was telling Brad this the other day, that I could work really hard Mm -hmm. and bring up the ratings Mm -hmm. and my bosses would get money. Here I work really hard. We get more money. We feed more people. It's extremely rewarding. But this is just in California. In Los Angeles County. In Los Angeles County. But what about... People in Michigan or Chicago or any state, New York, what about those people? What do they do? So we have uh, sister agencies. We have when in New York, God's Love We Deliver, which Joan Rivers was very involved with. God's Love We Deliver. God's Love We Deliver. There's another one called Manna in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have spiritual roots, and most of these organizations like ours— Project Open Hand in San Francisco, Mama's Kitchen in San Diego. They were born in response to the AIDS crisis Mm -hmm. 29, 30, 31, 32 years ago. Just like Project Angel Food. We were created in response to the AIDS crisis. Marianne Williamson, 
Yeah. Who, of course, is best-selling author. Right. And yeah. running for president. She. Wait, so- she's running. She's running for president. <laughs> yeah. Marion, did she announce that? Uh. Marion Williamson. Wow. Mm-hmm. So she, she did the miracles. What is it? Of course, the miracles. Course of miracles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Marianne, thirty years ago, um, wanted to send love in the form of food to people dying of AIDS. It was a right. time when no one wanted to get near people with AIDS. Right. People were wearing masks. People didn't want to touch them. And Marianne said they are human beings. They needed to be treated that mm-hmm. way. And she made sure that food got to them. She didn't know how to get the food to them. Right. She didn't know how to cook hundreds of meals at a time. Right. She didn't know where to do it. So she found a church at the cow- corner of Fountain and Fairfax, and she got volunteers. Good for her. And so— You know, she had a, a congregation in Michigan at one time. Oh, she did? Yeah, she did. Well— but good for her. She does her best to help people. And she still is very involved with the organization. And uh, so 30 years later, we expanded to help everyone who is sick with a critical so, illness. So all our viewers and listeners for Star Vision live all over the world. So do you have anything on your website where they can go to other places in other states or oh, other cities? that's a good idea. We have, uh, we're a member of the Food is Medicine Coalition. Okay. And so if you tap on that icon on our homepage, you can see the other cities that have organizations like ours. Okay, so, so do you got that, guys? So you go to? Food is Medicine Coalition. Yeah, but no, but to but get angelfood. there, angelfood.org. Angelfood, angelfood.org, and then press the icon that says Food is Medicine, food a member medicine. of the Food is Medicine Coalition, because food is medicine. Yeah. And, and has, has it ever gotten to a point where people got back on their feet and didn't need your services anymore and ended up volunteering? That's <laughs> a great what? story, right? <laughs> We, I'm making up that story. <laughs> well, you know what? Our favorite phone calls are the people who say, I don't need the service anymore. I feel better. Give it to someone else who's sick. Who really And needs we get it. those phone calls. We also get, in the mail, we'll get a, a nice note saying, this is Cindy. I used to get your meals. Thank you so much. Aww. Here's $50. Oh. And then we also get, People volunteering. Yeah. And, you know, they come and they say, I can't give you a donation, but I want to volunteer. Because you need, there. it's just as important to have that as the money. Absolutely. Because what if, what if people aren't there to cook? We need what people. What happens? So what happens is whether we have five people or 25 people, we still have to make sure we cook and package 1,500 meals a day. 1,500 meals a day. So if we don't have people, I have to go up from my office and Uh go down and help out. And the staff from upstairs helps out. And we all just crank it out because we've got to get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We we can't. You know, people rely on us. Like, do you ever have chefs, like famous chefs, come in and say, I want to volunteer and help you guys? We have some famous chefs who say, I'd like to help you out. So we do chef's dinners where we have some donors come and enjoy Mm -hmm. the meals. And some of the chefs do come and just cook and Mm -hmm. have some fun. We have some culinary schools that come and do internships in our kitchen. We, uh, I call the kitchen the great equalizer mm-hmm. because everyone is treated the same, whether you're Char, you're CEO, you're Charlie Sheen, right. or you're from a recovery program. Right. We have a lot of people from recovery programs. Or if you're you know, from Easter Seals, everyone is treated the same. It's- you're a body in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You're cooking – you're cutting onions today. Someone yep. else is peeling potatoes. Doesn't matter who you are. You're another body in the kitchen, and this is what we need today. And then, if somebody is doing like um, 
that that they have to do service work because they maybe had you know a legal issue and they have to do voluntary work somewhere. Do you guys do you get those people? Yeah, you um, either you read up on us or you're just very I'm intuitive. Just, I'm, you know, I don't have really questions here, so I'm, I'm just maybe, maybe sometimes I feel like that when I do when I do the show because I feel like. Information's downloaded <laughs> into me. So, what, what's so the story some people about who this? might have too many parking tickets or whatever and have to do community service. Community service. That's what I was thinking yes. of the word community service. So, many of those people pick Project Angel Food to do right. their community service. And what happens almost eight or nine out of 10 times right. is a Love it so much, they want to come back and volunteer oh. on their own. Oh. And who does the grocery shopping? I mean, come on. Our head chef, John Gordon, he uh, puts together, the. he works with our kitchen manager and our registered dietitians. Mm-hmm. People don't realize there's a lot of science to what we do. Right. And registered dietitians look at the portions. And because food is medicine. Food is medicine. So... They order food twice a week, and I have seen, like, gobs of turkey, ground turkey come, and it goes directly into the brazier. But are there companies like Tyson Chicken or, I don't know, like some like Campbell Soup or something? Do, does anybody, like, donate food uh, like that for you guys? No, it would be great if they would. I have, like, I think, chicken would be great because we have chicken a lot. And potatoes would be great, so and rice, may, and so beans. So I think that if anybody <laughs> here knows anyone from Tyson Chicken, Tyson they, Chicken, they should go because I can't even. I, that's all I see advertised on TV is Tyson <laughs> Chicken. I don't, I don't know, but that would be like reach so, out to me. They sh- Richard it, at angelfood.org. Very yeah, easy. Yeah, and and also just like um, any any other like companies that. Our wholesale food people. And what if you did something like you got the press there, you got volunt- like you got local KTLA or somebody there? We love KTLA. I love KTLA. They're, They're the best. They're very good. Right? They're so good. I love them. And ABC7. We love ABC7 is yeah. good, too. Well, so so is NBC, though. I like their morning show. And the, uh, Telemundo. KNBC? Telemundo. Oh, yeah. That's really good. So... So, you're you're all about TV. That would be like great PR to get those people there to to. And, if and Tyson would, Chicken gives us like hundreds of pounds of chicken, or thousands, I don't right. know how much we need. Uh, or if they do a plan where they give us hundreds of pounds of chicken a week, mm-hmm. I'll get the media there. You we will do live. You guys hear coverage that? Because you know what? what yeah. There, there was a really nice man who ran the um, the car company that would take me to the airport when I would have to go out of town. It was Jackson Limousine, and every Thanksgiving they and they still do it to this day. They give out turkeys to nice. families. That's beautiful. And so that's so Tyson must make turkeys too. But but whatever. There there's got to be. Idaho potatoes. I don't know. I'm like just thinking <laughs> off the top of my head. But you but, know what? Uh, chicken's a good one because we buy a lot of chicken. We have Moroccan chicken. We have apricot chicken. We have curry chicken. We have so, so many chicken I, dishes. I think your marketing person should should send out something to these people and see how go have a meeting. Yeah, it would save you guys so much money. How much do you? How much money? We spend a lot of money on. Do you food. make chicken soup when people are sick? No, not right now. Do you know how? I personally don't. <laughs> I know how to make chicken soup. Good. I would come You there need to and come in and volunteer. I will come and volunteer. When, you know, we... And I'm going to make chicken soup. <laughs> Mondays, we need volunteers more than any other day. Okay. That's the day people are most prone to cancel. Monday. On Mondays? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nikki, so if you want to come in Monday... Whiz that I'm going to come in on a Monday... <laughs> Which one? This coming Monday? Um, what time do you... Do you 8 o'clock orientation. Uh-huh. And you have to wear a hairnet. 
Okay. And no open toe shoes. Okay. I'm he's looking. I'm wearing <laughs> Uggs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, I um, I need to I need to look at my schedule either this okay, Monday good. Uh, maybe this Monday I can do it. Yeah, whenever you want. Okay. It'll be fun. Okay, but can I make chicken soup? No. Oh. You have to make what the chefs <laughs> tell you to make. <laughs> Because we have a whole schedule, this whole 90-day unduplicated meal plan. Oh, right. So, you know, we might be making, uh, what, some turkey patties that day. Right. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. I, and, and so do you wear rubber gloves when you make the food so you wear, that it's clean? You do wear gloves, not rubber gloves, but, you know, those, what are they, latex? Latex yeah. gloves. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is like fascinating, and it's just so lovely that you're helping so many people, Richard. And what what's really great is when you volunteer, and if you're packing the meals, we have trays like the lean cuisine ones with right. three compartments. Right. When you're packing them, you can't help but think about the person who's going to get that meal. And if somebody's working there and there's tater tots, can the workers taste the tater tots? So... <laughs> Here's the good news. What? <laughs> the uh, <laughs> volunteers and staff get lunch every single day. So whatever, oh, I'm definitely coming. <laughs> whatever we're cooking <laughs> for the clients, we serve to the staff. Okay. Now, sometimes we season it a little bit more because... No, I'm serious. I think I can come. dietary restrictions. So what are the... T- what time? I, 8 o'clock to what? 8 to 12.30. 8 to 12.30. That's it? Easy shift. You can take a little break and come back at one thirty if you want and do. Well, I'll have to see my shift. clients, and so we'll have to move my clients to later. But I, I'll come from eight to one thirty. Twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. Okay. Good. Yep. This Monday, you can. Count this on Monday, me. you're in. I, I'm in. Okay. I'm good. in. Unless Nikki calls me or texts me right now and says you can't, you got a meeting. <laughs> but no, I really want to do this. Okay. Good. Yeah. It'll be fun. It. But wait, you're you're at Fountain. Where are you? No, that's where we started. We're on Vine Street. You're on Vine Street between so, Melrose and Santa Monica. Isn't that expensive rent? We own the building. We are actually paying a mortgage. Wow! And this is exciting. This is like you're leading me to all these great questions. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm I, I'm getting better at this. I've been practicing for four years. <laughs> so. Um, we just approved a capital campaign. So we're going to do a $5 million campaign to pay off the building, renovate the kitchen, and have a no waiting list. Wait, I've got an idea. And this is the first time we've ever announced it. It's an exclusive to you. Oh, my God. Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> if you ever want to do an event where I where I would read for people in the audience and bring them up on stage. Oh, that's fun. If you want to do an event, I'm volunteering my time. Okay, good. I'm Let's serious. do it. Yeah. It would be really, really fun to do. Yeah, and it would be fun. And I would love fun. to help the people. Oh, great. And you, you charge them a lot of money for a ticket. <laughs> good. <laughs> How much? I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it depends. It. You know. How much do your people pay? Your people pay. For private readings, it's a lot of money, but you can probably get for a ticket like probably anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. But if you have like VIP people who have a lot of money, they can pay two hundred dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. And will you read everyone? No, I can only read. I can't read every. If there's an audience of two hundred or or a thousand people, I can't read everyone. But I bring people up on stage and. I read for them, and I talk about how everybody's intuitive, and I talk about you don't have to be afraid of death because we we see our loved ones again when we cross over, and and how everybody's got is guided, and that we make choices in life, and our intuition helps us make wiser choices to stay out of harm's way and attain our goals, and so I teach that as I'm doing my readings, and I and so but it's it's it it can be. I never know who I'm going to choose in the yeah. audience, but it can be very entertaining, and it can be oh yeah, it can be sad and emotional, and it can emotional, and it can be funny. So and I I have a question for okay. you. Okay. Um, how do you turn it off? So like I, you know what I you're seeing me, and you have to turn right. off. Yeah, no, whatever I, might I, be coming. I only I, I'm like in the moment, so. 
when I like I'll be taking phone callers. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to do that in a minute because <clears throat> we promised people I would take phone callers. But um, I have to go to another place to do that. Like I, I'm. It's it's not a thought. I think it's a thought given to me. But I also feel like when I'm doing my interviews, because I don't always have questions for people, I do feel like like thoughts are given to me like from from a wiser place to help me ask the right questions. Yeah, it's interesting because like that community service question, like who would think of asking that? That was a good one. Well, thank you. <laughs> but but I'm thrilled for you guys and I'm going to I'm going to come there on Monday and Will you come back again on the show? And yes. We'll, we'll promote whatever it is you're doing. And I'll take pictures of you with your hairnet oh, working. Wait a, <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. And post it all How over. How big is that hairnet? <laughs> it's, it's like a beautiful white hairnet. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, can you do have it. to get pack that that's beautiful okay. hair in there. That's, that's fine. Oh, God. <laughs> do we have to go in line with the, the photo? <laughs> I'm so vain. You get photo approval. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Well, Richard, thank you so much for being here. And thank you. I, I, it's a pleasure. I, I, I'm just so honored that you took the time to talk about this, your work, because every day, you don't, you really don't go to work a day in your life. You love what you do. I do love <laughs> it. It's, it's very rewarding. You know, I walk into the building and I call it a sanctuary of goodness. Yeah. Everyone is there because they want to be there. Yeah. And you just see happy people. Aww. You see people who are selfless, who want to help a neighbor that they mm -hmm. may never meet. It's really, really powerful stuff. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I'm excited to come on Monday. I will be there. You know what? I, I just want to tell one story. I know you tell, have to get no, to No, that's okay. I walked into work one day and... You walk in, and it's where they're packing the meals. And there was a woman picking up some meals. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if she was a client, a caregiver. I didn't know who she was. And I said, so what do you think of the meals? Because I always like to hear. And she said, you know what? My father loves them. Aww. And I said, oh, they're for your father. How great. And I said, I'm Richard Ayub. Nice to meet you. And I guess she knew I was the executive director. She said, can I hug you? Oh. She hugged me, and she started crying, and she said, you are saving my father's life. Cool. And to get that, who goes to work and gets that? You know, it's really beautiful. It's, I love it. it. Maybe a doctor. Yeah, a maybe, doctor. Maybe a, a doctor. A firefighter. Yeah, maybe, yeah, but it's amazing. And and your heart is so into it. I love it. It's and it's. I think you're you're getting really good karma, as well. <laughs> good because you do it because you love it. Absolutely, it feels like I've always been meant to do this. Okay, so give out the website again. Angelfood.org. Angelfood.org and. Donations are welcome. You can give a yes. dollar. You can give 50 cents. You can give $2. You can come and volunteer if you're in California. I'm going there Monday. Come and volunteer <laughs> Come volunteer with, with, with Char. Come see me in a hairnet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, everybody. Um, we're going to be right back, and I'm going to take callers. Thank you. Hey, everybody. You probably think I only do individual readings. But sometimes I get a message for everybody, and I wrote a poem that was channeled through me, and I'd like to read it to you. It's called Until We Meet Again by Shar Margolis, A Message from Heaven. My work is done. It's time to leave. Know that I am also missing you as you grieve. I completed my karma on the earth, and now it is time for my rebirth. I'm flying with eagles and dancing on stars. Please know that I haven't gone far. The love we have will carry us through until the day I am again with you. What an amazing journey this passing over can be. I am in good company. I know you hurt, but please trust me. Our journey together is for eternity. So until the day our souls reunite, stay peaceful and well and use your spirit's sight. I will bring you signs from up above. 
a butterfly, a bird, my sign of love. Don't worry about me. I'm in good hands. Stay strong, stay positive, and continue to pray. When it is your natural day to graduate from the earth, look for me in the bright white light. We have completed our purpose and all will be right. This is handmade. It's signed by me. It's an affordable gift for any occasion. Just go to Shar.net and click on store. Thank Hi you. everybody, it's Shar. Well, many of you have asked if I teach psychic intuition, and I do. Everybody has a sixth sense. Everybody has an ability to prevent problems and attain goals in their lives. And I'd love to teach you. Just go to char.net, C-H-A-R-N-E-T, and join one of my classes and call Nikki and she'll help you out. Remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Howdy, everybody. It's me. I'm ready to talk to your loved ones in the spirit world. And um, and thank you guys so much for watching Shar Vision. It really means the world to me. And um, I we love your comments on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And especially Sonny loves getting all his little um, comments. And I know that he's loved. Okay, here we go. Thank you. There's... There's there's a headset coming because they know I can't hear anything. Okay. Four eight oh. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Hi. I'm fine. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. My first time. Well, thank you for calling for being a first time caller in Charvision. Okay, just be open minded about everybody living and deceased. Okay. Okay. And don't say any names unless I say it first. And so I, I want to know if you have somebody who's an Ann, A-N-N, or a middle name Ann. Yes. Is, and is that family? Yes. Who, are they living or they're deceased? Living. Who, who living. Is, who is this to you? Uh, my daughter. Your daughter. Okay. And her middle name's Ann. Okay. And it, is she, is, is there something new coming for her with school or work or something like this? Something new for her? Not that I know of. Okay. I feel like there's a new opportunity or something new coming for her. And also I see somebody that's a J or G initial. Are you there? I can't think of anybody. Who's a, yeah? I do you have somebody deceased that's a J or G? No. Okay. Is there anyone who's a Jean or John or Joseph or Jean or middle name Jean? Nobody that I can think of. Okay, and there's nobody who's a John or Joseph around you. No. Okay. I think there is, but maybe I'm. In, what do you guys have? Some because I'm. I've got people in the in 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 here. Did do one of you guys have a J? Yeah. My husband has a cousin named John. Okay. Your your husband has a cousin named John. Is he living? Yes. Do you do you know where where are there health issues around him, or around your husband? Yes. Okay, because they're showing me health issues, and there's there's also somebody who's like a Mary or Marie or Margaret. Yes, Mary. Is that your mom? Who is that? My mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law. She's deceased. And, and is, she, is she deceased? Yes. I feel her spirit's with you, and I feel, is there also some health concern about your husband? Yes. And does he have any issue with his heart or circulation? Yes. Okay, because she's telling me, I'm not allowed to give out medical advice, but she's telling me to tell you to keep an eye on this. Is he on medication? Yes. Okay, to make sure that he's on the right medication and also make sure that the pharmacist gives you the right medication. That... 
that they don't make a mistake in what he's taking and that he takes it properly. Okay. Got it? Yes. Okay. And the other thing is, did you recently fall or are you having any issue with your foot or your legs? Uh, no, no. What about your husband? No, but my, my sister-in-law fell recently. Oh, your sister-in-law fell. Okay, is that your husband's sister? No, my, my sister-in-law. That's your sister-in-law. Okay, so that's your your brother's My brother's wife. wife. Okay, and she fell? She fell. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I don't know... I don't know why I'm picking up on this, but I feel like she needs to be careful with, uh, I don't know. I, I just feel, did she hurt herself? Uh, this, well, this is the first time I think she's fallen. So Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know about, why I'm getting yeah. this, but I feel like she needs to be careful of, of a repeat uh, situation like this. And did you have somebody in your family that had a fire? Not that I can think of. Or do have you had any issues with things in your kitchen with smoking? Or is there anyone who smokes around you? Um, in our old RV, I think we had uh, some problems with the stove. Okay, is it is it? Do you not have it anymore? Yeah, we uh, traded that for oh. the end. Okay, so. So you had problems with smoke, and so you got rid of it, and you're okay then. So you prevented uh, yeah, you prevented that issue from happening. Okay, um, so I feel like I'm not worried about your husband, but your his mom is saying that he needs to be diligent about his medicine and how he takes it and that he takes it. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for calling. It was lovely to talk to you today. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Okay, do we have time for one more caller? Okay. Hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, I just need you to be open-minded about everybody living and deceased. So I want to know if you have somebody who's a Stephen or Susan or S or C person. Um, I have, there's an S person. Is that a female? Yes. It, is, is it S with an N in it or an R? Um, no. Or an L in her name? Either. Is there an L in her name? No. Okay. But there, there's not a Sue. Uh, Susie. Susie. That's all yeah. the same to me. Who's, <laughs> is her real name Susan? Um, I honestly don't know. It was an aunt. Okay, and she's deceased? Yes. Okay, and was there a family house that was like, two stories and maybe with an attic or did you used to stay at a place upstairs when you were younger? Yes. And was it haunted? Oh, that I don't know. <laughs> I never heard of that. Okay. What, but you didn't have fear staying in this house where there's an upstairs, right? No, not at all. Okay. It was, it was fun. Okay. But what was it? Was it your grandparents or your parents? Um, I w it was a vacation home that we stayed at with my parents. It was a vacation home. Okay. I don't know why I'm seeing this. Are, are your parents deceased? Yes. And is there somebody that's an M or J initial? Uh, yep. Is that your mom or your dad? Neither. Okay. My it, son. Your son is an M or a J? Yeah. Which M or J? Um, well, his first initial is M and his middle initial is J. Okay. And so is he MJ or, he's, or his 
first name starts with M. Is it spelled M-A or M-I? M-A. Like Mason or Mark or Matt, Matthew? Yes, yes. Matthew? Yes. Yeah, yeah Matthew. He, he's living, right? Uh-huh. Okay. But does he, does he ever talk about seeing spirits? Or does he talk? Not, no. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting this, but I'm feeling like there's a spirit that's trying to connect with you guys in your family. Yeah. Yeah. And I, do you ever feel the energy of deceased loved ones? And then they're and they're showing no. they're showing me an R. In, yes. Is that your dad? Oh my god. No. Oh, but is there a male R? Yes. R O or R A? R O. Like Robert. Oh my god. Is yes. it Robert? Yes. Oh my god, yes. And he's deceased, right? Yes, he's, sadly. He's trying to connect with you guys. Oh, my God. Can you imagine being a spirit trying to connect with somebody and what? nobody's listening to them? Well, I, I've been wanting to hear, what does he say? What does he say? Well, first of all, he's, he's grateful to you, so you must have been kind to him. And I loved him. It, yeah. Did you live with him? No. Um, like when we were kids. When you were little. Okay, so... He's saying that he's, did he die young? 53. That's young to me. <laughs> very young. That's very, very, very young. young. Anyway, he's grateful to you. He's, he's in a good place. He's met people in spirit that he, that loved ones. He's like not alone. And there's an E-L or an L or an E or an L. Yeah, L. Is that a female? Yes. Is it L with an N in it or an R or an S in it? Neither. S? No. Is it a Lucy? Uh -uh. Is it a Lucy or Lee? I don't know no. the name. But is, is the L your mom? I... Yes, the L is my mom. Yeah, I can't hear the exact name. Is it Lee or Leah or? Oh, my gosh, it's Lila. Lila. Okay, that's close enough. Okay. I, you know, I hear phonetically and it's kind of downloaded in me and then I have to like spell check everything. So, um, your mom is with him and your mom watches over you and I feel like she's tried to go to, to, is it Matthew, your son? And she's tried to connect with you and you're like oblivious to the spirits trying to say, hi, I'm here. I love you. I am always looking for Signals and, 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 the, and do you know do you know about and... the signal that's the bird or the butterfly? <gasps> yeah. Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a sign for you. The bird. Oh my God! I see this bird every day on the wire at work. Yeah. And then it wasn't there for the longest time, and now it came back. It came back because you're calling me today, and they're saying, "Hey." It's me. Who oh did you? Oh my God! And in your own intu oh. in your own intuition, who did you think it was? My brother Robert. That's who I think it is. It's your brother. Yeah, I thought it was and your when brother. I, and that's why I asked. If what you about lived, my mom? That's why I asked if you lived with him. No. Who, no, no, um, no. When you were younger, you lived with him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, we did live up the street from each other when we got older. Yeah, well, he loves you, and he knows how Aww. devastated you've been since he crossed. But your mom met him in heaven, so they're together. He did. Yes, that was only three years ago. Yeah, they 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 met each other in heaven. So, you know, that's the beauty of this work. We we don't die. We just we just elevate to another level and we go and life is a school and we're here to learn lessons and then we go to the spirit world and we hopefully learn lessons when we're there and we keep recycling in different lifetimes till we end up becoming one with goodness and love and god are they always they're not there always, like there's not they're not always with you but they will at times they'll come when they can to let you know that they love you
and that you're that you're, you're not alone and they know about your son and and they know about your world and I feel like they're talking about that place you used to go to with the upstairs and was it by the water? Yes. Yeah. They're talking oh, about the good old days, the the beautiful fun days. Was there sand? Was there sand? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm Sorry, I'm getting excited. I feel like I feel like yes. your mom didn't like all the sand being brought into the house. <laughs> Yeah, we but, used to go to Ventura, California. Oh, there for, you go. We would rent a beach house for two weeks. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Anyway, oh. I so appreciate you calling. You know, if anybody wants a reading, they can go to Shar.net because I do phone readings. I do Skype readings. If if there's, you know, it's always my pleasure if people decide to make appointments. I also do intuition classes and make you aware or help you become aware of when the spirits are trying to connect with you. <laughs> anyway, How do we get those? Um, just go to Shar.net. You can call Nicole. Go to Shar.net okay. and call. It, it's 248-909-2427. 248-909-2427. Okay. You can even text her. Anyway, thank you so much for calling. God bless you. Be well. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Thank you so oh, much. So my pleasure. So my pleasure. Take good care of yourself. Okay, everybody, that's it for now. I want to thank Richard Ayub and the Angel Food Network. And if you want to volunteer with me, I'm going there Monday. So come on down. I'm going to wear a hairnet and cut, and cut uh, onions. And I want to thank Gabriel for being here and Brad Bessie and, of course, my Tony Sweet who runs this whole place, who I would never have the show if it weren't for Tony. And Mark, who's here, who's helping us out. And especially Nikki at home, Nicole, thank you so much for staying up so late. She stays up till like 10 o'clock in Michigan in the office because, you know, the time difference. Okay, everybody, God bless you. Be well. And remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Bye-bye. <laughs>